James Dixon. I'm from Texas. I came to see a uh, A-Rod PTT here at the Bill Brown Ford Center. Had a problem for about a year with the battery light. Been struggling, changed the alternator multiple times, batteries multiple times, fixed a few wire shortages. Came to him, he found the problem, the battery light's gone. Thank you, A-Rod. What is going on guys? Welcome back to the channel. Tonight, we had somebody drive all the way from good old Texas to come see PTT. He has a battery light on and hasn't been able to get it figured out on his side of town. So today, we are gonna fix that and send him back to the Lone Star State. All right guys, let's check this out. And I just wanted to note that this vehicle is a 2011 with 442,648 miles and it still has the emission system on it. All right, you guys, thanks so much for coming back today. We are gonna be figuring out what's going on with his battery light. All you guys are gonna need is a DVOM, a good set of eyeballs, and a good light. Now, when you get a battery light, you can get some DTC set in the PCM. I'm gonna put a link in the description of the playlist that I have made regarding battery lights on my beautiful 6.7s and where they are located so that you guys can run around with no battery light on. I haven't even pulled the codes on here. I really don't even care about the codes. All I know is I need three circuits at that alternator connector or generator connector uh, and to the PCM, this connector. I have already went ahead and disconnected our alternator or generator connector and the middle terminal and the left terminal are both going to this PCM connector. Pin number one, which is the most right one here by my thumb, that goes to a fusible link that comes up from down there and connects to this side of the battery. I have had problems on the red circuit that is coming from that fusible link and both circuits that are coming from the PCM to the generator connector. So one of the first things we're gonna do, I actually forgot, you're gonna need a test light, preferably one with an incandescent bulb. The LED one eh, is not gonna be suited for this application because the issues that I have had, sometimes it'll have power, but it cannot carry a load. And load testing that circuit is gonna be one of the most important things to do because you need to see if your circuit that you're testing even has integrity. Right now, my test light's illuminating. We're gonna go for the connector at the generator and this terminal right here. It's supposed to be hot at all times. If that does not light, you have a problem. You could have a problem on all three of these wires. The likelihood, probably one. Could have all three. So make sure you rule this out. Number one, make sure you have power coming from your fusible link. The next thing you're gonna do to test the other circuits is disconnect your body side of the P PCM connector. And you are going to test pin 14. Pin 14 is the left most pin on the generator connector and pin 14 is actually going to be right here. One, two, three, four. That is pin 14. You're going to come over here to the generator connector and we're going to test the corresponding pin for the generator to the PCM. Let's see if I can do this one-handed. And, and our meter is gonna read 0 0.2. Now this means our circuit is good from point A to point B. Now, I could have only one strand of wire making this connection. You're gonna wanna load test 
that whole entire circuit again. However, with my experience and the problems that I've seen, I'm going to deduce right now, based on my bright test lamp on step one, this reading for step two, our third is going to be that middle pin, and that is pin 53. Pin 53 is going to be right here at the PCM connector. And I am going to put that terminal here at our generator connector, and we're gonna look at the meter. Our meter is reading OL. That means that our circuit that the PCM is using to take command of the PCM is not connected from point A to point B. Now I have showed you guys uh, in those videos that I'm, I've posted in the description, you have visualized with me that you can see the engine right in front, okay? You don't see the grill, you're looking at the engine. Visualize, you see the cooler, you see the fan, you see the alternator. There is a harness that runs along the frame, comes down the K-member, and then makes a turn and comes forward. I have seen problems right here, right here in this bend. And then it snakes and goes underneath the crankshaft pulley. And then goes straight up to the alternator or the generator on the driver's side. It then goes right up to that connector that you guys saw. It is imperative that you guys check this trough for issues and the problem that we're having is this yellow circuit. So we're going to go underneath here and look at this yellow circuit and, and inspect its integrity. This gentleman has already made a repair. Let's see if I can get up in here. This gentleman has already made a repair. He said he was coming out of Oregon and was getting a, a, a battery light and he made a solder repair on our yellow wire. So I didn't know is our problem here? Did he not make a good repair? So I went from the PCM to this side and our meter read good. I went right directly on the other side of his repair and checked it and it was good. I'm like, okay, well, I have reasonable enough evidence to substantiate his repair. He did go ahead and cut all the zip ties, so it made it accessible to get to the yellow wire in front. You can see the crank pulley. So I went from here to the PCM. It read good. So I've just isolated that our problem area exists right here. From the middle of the crank up, that's where my problem is. So are you gonna do an overlay? Are you gonna fix it? Well, you can automatically do an overlay if you feel comfortable from going to the alternator connector down to wherever you are gonna be splicing. I have never did an overlay. I have always found the problem. And this one was a little tricky because he's already made one repair and usually it's, I've always seen just one repair, but I have had a couple come back where it has been two. I don't normally lay down on the driver's side, but today I did because I had to look at it from a different angle or a different perspective. So here's the steering stabilizer. And if you guys look, he does have an oil leak, but you can see that trough where it's going up. I located the yellow wire and immediately pulled it right out of this trough. It was all the way up here, following that harness all the way up. I just gave it a tug and I felt it completely bust and if you guys were to guess it you guys can see the green corrosion that took this wiring circuits life so what am I gonna do this is kind of tight uh, to get in I think what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna strip back this wire I am gonna get another circuit and feed it from down uh, above I'm gonna make my wiring repair up there and uh, do an OE 
overlay to go around that bad section and add in a factory, I'm thinking maybe like an 18 gauge wire. So I'm going to get this thing rolling. Tell me what you guys think about this in the comment section below. If you guys have found a wiring problem to your 6-7 alternator here by the driver's side. Thanks so much for watching. Remember to like, comment, sub, share. If you'd like to get on the podcast, check out my email and we'll get you in queue so we can talk about the best trucks on the planet. We'll catch you next time. See you.